Hi guys, welcome back. Matt Osborne here. In this video, we're going to be looking at a Besser R2. I think this one's particularly sexy. Stay tuned and we'll take a closer look. So what can I tell you about this potentially unusual looking camera? This camera is in production from 2002 to 2004. So it's quite a modern film camera in kind of film camera terms. I know we looked at the Nikon F100 yesterday. And that's an even newer camera which was made until 2012. But in terms of range finders, apart from Leica, there are not that many film cameras being made in the, in the 2000s. Just show you the back. So if you're a regular follower of this channel, you'll know I enjoy my Voigtlander Besser cameras. The Besser R2, as the name suggests, follows the Besser R. So Besser R, Besser R2. What's the best way to show you? These two cameras are extremely similar, so I'll go through the common features on both cameras first, and then we'll look at why the R2 is different and could be useful to yourself if you're looking to get into Voigtlander Besser cameras. So yes, I should probably point out, this follow the R2, but then you've also got the R2S, R2C, I see that video. And then there's also the R2M and the R2A. Again, I've done a video on the R3A, which is very similar to the R2A. So feel free to check that out if you want to see those particular models. I wanted to show you this camera partly because I think it's quite unusual. This camera was produced in olive green or black. And I think with the silver lenses, I've got it shown here. It's quite a, a nice combo with the, the dials on the top being silver. I think if you can match it with a silver lens, I think it looks particularly pretty but I'll come on to the lens in a second. So common features of the Besser R and the Besser R2. If I show you the top plate of the camera you can see that we have built-in frame lines for 35mm, 50mm, 75mm and 90mm. You use the frame selector on the top and that would change your frame lines in your viewfinder. This is a slightly different design to like an M rangefinder cameras where when you attach the lens, the, the camera automatically recognizes what lens you've put on. So if you put a 35mm lens on, it'll bring up a 35mm frame line and so on. With the Voigtlander, you just select it on the top. If you're someone that uses multiple lenses, it's quite nice to view a scene through your viewfinder and then scroll through the different frame lines and see which focal length may be best suited to the scene that you're looking at in terms of your composition. So it's really nice to be able to get a preview of kind of 35, 50, 75, 90, and then you can decide if you have all those lenses, which lens might suit you best at that time. Just looking through the viewfinder, it's like looking through a super clear, bright piece of glass. It is absolutely crystal clear. And there's a really nice kind of rectangular, high contrast range finder range finder patch in the middle with kind of a rounded with rounded sides it's really clear and if you're used to perhaps the like a barnet cameras which i talk about a lot this is a much brighter easy to view viewfinder if you enjoy viewfinders the viewfinder is parallax corrected for all frame lines meaning if you're focusing at something at close distance the frame lines will move as you focus this is really nice because if you use something like the 90 mil for example the 90 mil lmr which i reviewed recently if you use a 90mm lens on say an older Barnett camera, those are not parallax corrected. And then if you focus on a subject at say one meter, the frame that you'll then see through a non-parallax corrected viewfinder will be at a different place than if it is parallax corrected. I know I talk about this a lot in my rangefinder videos, but same with this, this is parallax corrected, so you have nothing to worry about. The viewfinder magnification is quite low, 0.68. So I tend to use better cameras more with 35mm lenses and perhaps 50mm lenses. And I tend not to use them as much with longer lenses in most cases. And while we're talking about the viewfinder, if you didn't see my recent video on blurry photos and how to avoid blurry photos, in that video I show you how to use a Nikon diopter on this viewfinder to give you an increased magnification. So if you're interested in that, check out that video. I personally use diopters on my Voigtlander Besser cameras and it helps me see. But if you have 20-20 vision, you obviously won't need this. One more feature with the viewfinder, if we advance the shutter and then we half press, there is three LEDs on the bottom of the viewfinder. You have an arrow this way, an arrow this way, and then a circle in the middle. That's showing you that you're overexposed or underexposed. This is a TTL light meter as found in the other Besser cameras and it takes two LR44 batteries which go under this cover here. They're the small coin batteries which you can get at your local store. If we go back to the top of the camera, the Voigtlander Besser R2 has a hot shoe rather than a cold shoe, meaning you can use this camera with flash triggers and speed lights on the top of the camera. You have a flash sync speed of 1 over 125 
which is better than the Leicas, which are only 1 over 50. And you have a maximum flash sync speed of 1 over 2000, which again is better than Leica because they only go to 1 over 1000. This is particularly useful if you're using fast lenses on a bright sunny day. Talking of flash, you also have the flash sync port on the end of the camera. And one additional feature of the shutter release button is threaded, so you can thread in your shutter release if you want to do, say, long exposures. Talking of long exposures, the Besser R2 doesn't have a self timer, whereas on the earlier Besser R, you have the self timer here. So on the R, not on the R2. In terms of film loading, the Besser R2 is exactly the same as all the other Bessers. I've already done a video on how to load film into Voigtlander Besser cameras, so feel free to check that. To open the film back, you need to lift this lever. So if I show you from the back, so we're pulling up and then one more pull. And the back door opens like that. There you see a very clean Voigtlander Besser camera inside. <laughs> uh, shut the back. And another benefit of the Besser over the Leica M is you have the film preview window here. So that reminds you of what film you have loaded in the camera, which is always quite useful if you're using multiple cameras at the same time. The close focus of the R2 and the R is both 0.9 meters. This is slightly less than like M cameras, which are normally 0.7 meters. In terms of weight, if we look at the R2 versus the R, the original Besser R is a light plastic camera whereas the R2 has a magnesium top plate, magnesium back plate, and magnesium back door. This makes it feel much more solid and a bit more Leica-like. These tend to feel a bit cheap and plasticky. And this is the same for the Besser L, the Besser R, and the Besser T. Those three cameras are all very plastic. The R2 and the later cameras are metal, or more metal, and they feel a much more robust camera. Talking of the Besser T, if you saw the Besser T video, in that video I show a grip similar to the grip I've got on this camera which makes it really nice to hold. But on the Besser T, it's slightly different. It's a trigger winder. And now that trigger winder will fit this, and this grip will fit the Besser T. It's probably easier to just watch the Besser T video, but on the bottom there's like a pull out, and then you have a lever hanging down, and that allows you to rapid fire. So the Voigtlander trigger winder will fit the R2, but it won't fit the Besser R older camera. So the question you have is, why should you buy a better made R2 compared to a cheap plastic R when the R2 is more expensive than the R. I guess we should cover price first. I've not checked the latest price of the Voigtlander Best R. See that video for prices, but I think they're around four to 500 pounds. So what would that be? Say five to $600. Um, I'll put an eBay link below so you can just check if you want to see the latest price. The Voigtlander Best R2 costs 700 to 800 pounds which is around $900 to $1,200. Now I've included quite a large price bracket because depending on the condition of the camera, depending if they've got accessories, depending if it's an olive green or black, there's lots of variables depending on the condition. You can pay more than $700 or if you get lucky, you can pay less than $700. So with that said, just for argument's sake, let's say the Voigtlander Besser R2 is two times more expensive than the Voigtlander Besser R. It's not quite, but let's just say that for freeze. Why would you buy an R2 and not an R? You would buy an R2 for one big reason and probably one big reason only. Now I've actually got this lens on here partly to look pretty, but partly as a distraction. So this is a Leica thread mat lens. It's actually the Leica Summeron 35 3.5. I've done a video on this already. Feel free to check that if you like lens reviews. If I take this LTM mount lens off, which is attached via an adapter, you can see underneath, this is actually like an M-mount Voigtlander Besser camera. The Besser R2, as far as I know, is the first like an M-mount Voigtlander Besser camera. And it's also, I think, the cheapest like an M-mount Voigtlander Besser camera. The advantage of this is, if you shoot with, say, a like M10, like M240, and you don't want to spend the money to buy, say, a like M6, you can get something that looks arguably pretty sexy for a lot less money, and still use the same lenses that you use on your like M10, on the Voigtlander Besser R2. As we're talking Voigtlander today, I've got a Voigtlander Nocturne 35mm f1.4 M mount lens. So now this still gives you a really nice compact setup, but it allows you to use the same lenses as I said on your digital and your film body. This to my mind is the biggest reason to buy the R2 and not the, the Besser R. The Besser R is lovely, it's a bit plasticky, but I find it's a nice lightweight setup, especially for 35mm, whereas the R2 is much more useful because now I can use all my M-mount lenses. 
So we've talked about better R versus better R2, and we said the R2 is better. We could also consider, say, a like a M2 versus the better R2. Not because they both have the number two in the name, but because it, to my mind, they're both really good at THID 5mm photography, meaning THID 5mm lens photography. The Leica M2 has got a THID 5mm frame line, and the best R2 has a THID 5mm frame line. So why would you get the best R2 instead of, say, a Leica M2? I guess the first answer is Voigtlander cameras are generally cheaper than Leica cameras, number one. But then from a more practical standpoint, you may prefer the Voigtlander because it's faster to load. It's got the, the fast, it's got the simple fast loading kind of SLR style back door, number one. It's got a flash sync speed of one over one two five instead of one over fifty, making it much more practical to use with flash photography. Sometimes I get motion blur if I'm using flash with Leica cameras when they only sync at 1 over 50 in, say, daylight, or mixing daylight and flash. And also if you're using fast lenses like the 35 1.4, this has a maximum flash sync speed, as mentioned, of 1 over 2000, which is a better, more usable flash sync speed to have than 1 over 1000 on a Leica. I'd say the benefit of getting a Leica is it's a much more solid build and maybe a camera for life. This camera could last for life if you look after it, but I think the all metal build of Leica is just make them feel like they'll last forever. Talking of all metal build, the last benefit I'll mention for the Besser is the lower weight. I tend to use Voigtlander Bessers instead of Leica cameras sometimes because they are lower weight. One reason I still keep the cheaper plastic Bessers is because they are even lighter than the more metal Bessers. So if I want to run or cycle, they're actually better than my Leica M6 or Leica M2, whatever, because that's going to rip a hole in my back pocket from the weight of the camera. So sometimes lighter cameras can be useful. And talking of the M6, one advantage I forgot to mention, if you're looking at M6 versus R2 in this example, both of those cameras have a light meter. But if you're looking at older Leicas, the M2, M3, M4, they do not have a light meter where this does have a light meter. So, so again, this could be the preferred choice if you like cameras with light meters. I haven't shot any models yet with this camera, but, but as we know, it's not the camera that makes the photos, it's the, the lens. So feel free to check any of my photos on Flickr or Instagram. to search for Mr. Like com, pretty much anywhere on social media and you'll find photos of kind of what I get up to. I've just realized I've got my matching t-shirt and matching camera. I should have put some camo stripes on for the, the full look, and maybe a green bandana or something to cover up some of this. <laughs> That's it for today's video, but before you run off, very quick thank you. Uh, everyone who voted on the poll that I recently did on YouTube, uh, which lens would you like to see? I recorded that video yesterday, hence the smiley face emerging. Very excited to get that edited and shared with you. So next week I will bring the Dream Lens video. It should be a good one, so could potentially be my best video ever made, dare I say. I know I set the standard low with videos like this, but I feel the production value is much higher, and I hope this Dream Lens video doesn't set expectation too high for future videos. That's all coming soon. Um, feel free to subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and please do like this video, it really helps me out. And lastly, as always, Patrons, big thank you, and Lots of exciting stuff to come on Patreon. We've got the modeled videos that I need to edit. And then I'm also going to share with you guys uncut footage from yesterday. So I'm going to have to cut it down for the, the YouTube edit for the next video. But I'll share the full, full footage is the plan for Patreon. So that's it for today. Back soon with the Dreamlands video. Bye.